There are scientific papers that have been written about why we should have been extinct 100 times over, if evolution were even true. Wait, what? How does he even get to that conclusion? What papers is he talking about? Citation fucking needed, Matt. Well, if y'all want to fuck around and find out why Matt Powell thinks we should be extinct if evolution's true, then please stay tuned. And the thing is, I do believe there was talk about these things. I believe if we study history, you know, the Confederates were able to shoot pterodactyls, you know, back in the Civil What's War. What's up, heathens? Today's video was brought to you by Ridge Wallets. Are y'all tired of carrying around big, thick wallets like this? Or how about you ladies? You tired of carrying around a big, giant, honking guy like this right here? Well, say no more. Get rid of those big, thick guys. And why don't you pick up a Ridge Wallet? Well, heathens, I gotta say, I love this Ridge Wallet. For one thing, it's got a small profile, but... Even though it has a small profile, it still holds up to 12 cards. See, you just pop the cards out right there, and then you can use it to buy your liquor. Oh, and to pile on to all this good shit about the wallet, it's made of a really durable material, so Ridge is giving it a lifetime warranty. But they are so confident that you're going to love this wallet right here that they have given you 45 days to test drive it. And if you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund. So if you'd like 10% off your order at Ridge.com, be sure to use the link below or just go to Ridge.com forward slash Godless Engineer. And you too can have the most awesome wallet that you have ever had in your life. And you can finally get rid of this bulky mother right here. Go with Ridge today. Ridge.com Godless Engineer. What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm the Godless Engineer, and I critically analyze apologist claims to give you the best arguments and information so that you can stand up and use your voice. Today, we're taking a look at a video by Matt Powell where he lies and misrepresents evolution? Oh, so you mean like every fucking video he's ever done? Today, his issue is... Genetic entropy, which is a term created by creationists as a gotcha for evolution. Too bad that not even the most recent creationist to resurrect this argument from the tomb thinks that you can demonstrate it in a lab. But let's see what Matt's dumbass argument is. So from generation to generation, as we accumulate genetic mutations, we actually accumulate one to 200 genetic mutations or what's known as neutral mutations per person per generation. Okay, I don't see why this matters. Neutral mutations aren't affecting our ability to procreate or our fitness in any kind of way, so I don't know why you're bringing it up. Neutral means that it has no effect whatsoever. But even so, Matt's numbers are wrong here on the number of even just mutations that occur per individual per generation. It's actually more along the lines of about 30 mutations per individual per generation, not 200. But even if we assume that there were 200 mutations per generation, if they're neutral mutations, then it really wouldn't matter because of the fact that they are neutral. And so what that means is that our offspring will have one to 200 typographical errors that we did not have in our genetics. And so population geneticists have all come to the conclusion that our genetics are actually deteriorating as we move on and as time progresses. As we reproduce, our genetics become worse over time as a population. I'm sorry, what does it even mean for our genetics to become worse? Our genetics change, and I think that you could definitely measure the number of genetic diseases that arise in our population, but that's not what he's talking about here. He's talking about neutral mutations as if they're deleterious. I don't think the word neutral means what he thinks it means. Neutral mutations don't cause genetic deterioration or anything like that. They are neutral. Also, I'm going to need some kind of citation to a meta-analysis on the opinions of all geneticists about this particular topic. He just ad hoc states that they all agree, but I can't find a single reference anywhere that would suggest this conclusion. So again, citation fucking needed, Matt. And so genetic entropy is something that evolutionists and atheists will often mock and say that it's a ridiculous idea that our genes could be deteriorating. But I'm sorry, if you have one to 200 typographical errors per person per generation, 
I mean, that over time is going to accumulate in the genetic pool and cause us to literally go extinct. So how exactly would this cause us to go extinct? These errors that you're talking about are neutral and they literally have no effect on humans. Given that, I don't see why people having different sets of genes would cause us to go extinct. I get that he thinks these are errors, but that's a really poor way of understanding mutations. They are copy errors, but that really only matters in the fertilization of the zygote and the subsequent development of a human being. Unless the mutation is deleterious, it's not going to hurt the person. And yes, sensible people would mock the idea of genetic entropy because it was literally only created by creationists so that they could have some kind of gotcha argument against mutations being a driving force in biological evolution. Even John Sanford, the most recent creationist to resurrect this dead argument, agrees that you cannot demonstrate genetic entropy in the lab. Since there's no way to demonstrate this at all, and creationists think that it's a rock solid argument against evolution, it should be laughed at. Population geneticists know that these errors that are accumulating will have some effect, even if that effect is vanishingly small. So all mutations, all errors in the human genome must have some effect on fitness. Uh, again, neutral mutations don't have an effect on fitness. They're just differences in the genetic code. More importantly, which population geneticists? Are they creationists? Since you can't test for genetic entropy in the lab, how do you even know it exists? I really wish Matt would stop being so vague and ambiguous about his references. In fact, if he could just actually list some references, that would be phenomenal. And so in 2003, the Human Genome Project was completed and they found as well that we lose one to 2% of our genetic information as human beings per generation. So our offspring is losing genetic information as time moves on, mutations are accumulating in the genetic code and this is causing us to go extinct as a population. I have no idea where he's getting this information that we lose one to 2% of genetic information per generation. The only place that I did find a similar statistic was in a James Crow paper where he was talking about a one to 2% fitness loss per generation. So it's not about information, it's about fitness in a very specific context. Even so, within that same paper, Crow says that if there were zero mutations, we would hardly notice a difference. But all in all, the Human Genome Project did not conclude that there was a one to 2% loss of genetic information. In fact, nobody but creationists have claimed that we lose genetic information. Also, we're not going extinct. In fact, the human population is continuously growing and that's kind of becoming a problem. There are scientific papers that have been written about why we should have been extinct 100 times over if evolution were even true. What scientific papers, Matt? Jesus fuck, could he take the time to provide some citations for us? As it stands, it just looks like he's pulling shit out of his ass. And so, the way that evolutionists try to rescue this is by invoking natural selection. But the problem is that natural selection cannot detect neutral mutations. So these 100 to 200 typographical errors in our bodies that get passed on from generation to generation cannot be detected by natural selection and therefore cannot be weeded out. Well, they don't need to be weeded out. They are neutral, so they don't affect the fitness of that organism or that group of organisms. I really don't see why normal people would have to rely on natural selection to explain neutral mutations. And I know he keeps using the word error because it has more of a negative connotation than neutral. I feel like this just highlights how dishonest he is. Natural selection only selects and removes the genes that are most deleterious or the mutations that are the most deleterious, it might enhance your best beneficial mutation and might remove the worst deleterious mutation, but the neutral mutations are completely invisible to natural selection. Selection cannot act upon them. And so natural selection has its limits. Yeah, it does, but then again, you don't have to select out neutral mutations. It makes no sense to suggest that it needs to. Also to note, the idea of beneficial and deleterious 
is subjective. One mutation can be deleterious in one environment, but beneficial in another, and vice versa. And so for evolutionists to claim that natural selection is what's causing us to select beneficial mutations, and those beneficial mutations make us better over time, well, even if that were the case, we're still getting one to 200 neutral mutations or typographical errors in our genetics that are building up along with those beneficial mutations, even if you were to grant their argument. And so errors over time will cause death. Uh. No, they won't. The beneficial mutations would allow us to survive better and the neutral mutations don't do anything. Why is he so hard up on describing neutral mutations as deleterious? Without this equivocation between neutral and deleterious, he has no argument whatsoever. So for evolutionists to claim that natural selection is gonna preserve us as a population when natural selection cannot even detect these deleterious mutations that are getting added to the genetic pool, it just goes to show that this crowd, these YouTube atheists, are the most scientifically illiterate people that exist. Really? He's gonna call us scientifically illiterate when he just gave away his bullshit tactic right here in this section. He's been talking this entire time about neutral mutations, but then he immediately switches to deleterious mutations. And all of a sudden it becomes natural selection can't select out deleterious mutations. Natural selection would select out those mutations. If it makes it harder for the organism to survive in its environment, then most likely those mutations won't survive very long in the population. But he explicitly shows in this section that when he says neutral, he means deleterious. That's just straight up dishonest. Talk about being scientifically illiterate. Also, I think that we've kind of reached a point in our society where natural selection only has a minor effect on our population. So I don't know who on earth would say that natural selection would preserve our population. And just the fact that they could believe in Big Bang cosmology or that pond scum turned to human over time or fish turn to fishermen over time, or bacteria to biologists. This proves that these people cannot be trusted. Because people that actually use free thought and that can do scientific empirical methods will not come to such ridiculous conclusions that the world popped into existence from nothing with no cause associated with it. Okay, this is really off topic, but we don't know if there was a cause for the beginning of the universe. It's possible that there was a cause that inflated this universe, but it's also possible that there wasn't. Also, I love how now we can't be trusted because we accept proven science. Really? The inflation of the universe, for whatever reason, has definitely been proven. And evolution has so much evidence behind it, it is a fact at this point. I am not the one that shouldn't be trusted. I think the person that's theologically committed to magical thinking shouldn't be trusted. I mean, folks, this stuff is absolutely pathetic on absolutely every level. And as creationists, we should constantly be calling them out. And one of the favorite talking points that I've found that are out there on our side is that we gain these genetic mutations and that they cannot be weeded out by natural selection. That is proof positive that we started out perfect as a genetic species and then we became worse over time. You know what's pathetic? Working as Kent Hovind's assistant. That's just fucking pathetic. It's also quite pathetic that you have to fabricate information in order to have an argument. I think it's pathetic to equivocate neutral with deleterious. And what does it mean exactly for humans to be genetically pure? I feel like this is Third Reich shit right here. Are genetically perfect humans blonde haired, blue eyed, and racist as fuck? I have no idea what in the fuck Matt is talking about at this point. Not a single cell becoming better over time, but the human population being created perfectly in the beginning and then becoming worse over time. And so even if we granted evolution to be true, if there was a single celled organism at the beginning, which all life descended from, that single celled organism would have just reproduced worse copies of itself and it would have died out as it accumulated mutations. And so natural selection only selects information that exists. It doesn't create new information, it simply selects. Oh, just because organisms or populations of organisms change over time, 
does not mean that they're getting worse. He's equivocating change with bad now. This is a video about equivocations. He presupposes that mutations in general are deleterious and they end up degrading the genetic code, whatever in the fuck that could mean. But in reality, it's just change over time. Just because genetic code changes does not mean that it's getting worse or losing information. But you know what we have been able to show in the lab? That mutations do cause an increase in information. Mutations provide increased genetic variety in a population, increased genetic material, novel genetic material, and novel genetically regulated abilities. Not all mutations are bad. Some are beneficial, most are neutral, but if the mutation is bad or affects the ability of an organism to survive in its environment, then eventually it will weed itself out through natural selection. He just ad hoc asserts that organisms would have died out without proving why they would have died out. It amounts to him screaming, change is bad. Think about it. Nobody would ever go to a copying machine and say that the copy is better than the original. But according to evolution, the copy, yeah, that's way better. Than the original. Nobody but creationists would think about this as a comparison to evolution. Oh God, I need an Advil or something after this. <clears throat> all in all, for Matt's video, very unimpressed. He shows exactly how dishonest he is with convoluting multiple different terms with the idea of deleterious mutations. He simply regurgitates lies told by other creationists, like the one to 2% genetic information loss. That was not the conclusion of the Human Genome Project. So I'm not saying that Matt's lying about it, but somebody in the pipeline is lying about that. In any case, Matt has literally no argument in this video whatsoever. He harps on neutral mutations and fails to recognize that neutral mutations are not gonna cause a loss and fitness, at least to the point where we're gonna go extinct. I wonder if the inflatable banana in his backyard named Dr. Peel knows about his dishonesty. I doubt it. But if you guys will, please go down below. Let me know what you think about Matt's video. Do you think he has a solid argument from genetic entropy or do you think it's horseshit like everybody else? Let me know down below. And hey, while you're down there, why don't you smash that like button and subscribe if you like this kind of video. Don't forget to stand up and use your voice. Bye, heathens.